It's Wednesday, you know what that means? We drink wine. I, you know, I did this intro before. It's going great, and then there's a siren, and the my Amazon package came, and anyways, I'll just deal with it. Anyways, today, <laughs> we're going to be drinking the Wolf Trap. So this is, uh, there we go, um, 2020. It is from South, um, South Africa, and you know what, I'll put in the description um, where it's from, the manufacturer. Book in Houtskloof. I'm not good with South African names, like the, the Dutch African name. I'm not good. I tried learning it. No, it's, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. So, anyways, today we are drinking, so this is a mixture of Syrah, Mouvedre, and Viognier. Um, and it's, one thing, this bottle has a sticker right here uh, that has 14.5%. Um, and let me tell you, you can taste, you can, even just like smelling the wine, here's the wine, very pretty, so it's like this wonderful medium, it looks really dark, but you can still see through it. Um, but it's this wonderful medium ruby wine. And the second even you're smelling it, like it hurts. It's almost difficult to smell because it burns your nose because of the amount of alcohol coming off of it. And this will be a reoccurring trend. <laughs> so, um, is that this wine is a little bit challenging because of how much alcohol is in it. Um, so in, it's got a lovely pronounced smell to it. Like, you know, like even if I have it down here, way down my chest, you know, get that hair there. Like even when it's like down here, I'm still smelling it. When I poured it first, I was like, ooh, I just, my kitchen was filled with the smell. It was great. It's a lovely smell. It has like bramble berries and cherries and plums and all of these wonderful smells. Um, sorry, hair. I need to stop wearing black. I can just see my hair all the time. Um, and it's got this kind of medicinal, it's got the smokiness, it's got this wet, so like it's, it's a really cool wine. And I was really impressed at it at first, but now it's just kind of stagnant. <laughs> I think it's cool when a wine opens up and it starts getting more flavors and it's really fun. But I think I'm reading a little bit too much into this wine too. Some of my notes, I think I'm just kind of going, oh, this could be this, it could be this, it could be this. Tasting this wine, so first off, it's very alcoholic, like we just said. So, um, so it makes everything hotter. It, it it really hides. This wine also has a really high acidity to it. It's full bodied. It it's not terrible, but the alcohol does kind of just overpower everything. Uh, that heat overpowers, and it's not the wine isn't big enough. Uh, like it, it's still full bodied and everything, but it's just like I'll sample it here. And while oof, I should never do the oof because of the alcohol after drinking wine, I don't think. If you're going to have alcohol that's this high, I mean, don't get me wrong. And it could just be the day that I'm drinking it. Sometimes there's those little variations. You know, I haven't had supper yet. I haven't, I don't have a, I haven't eaten since lunch. So there could be those sorts of things too at play. But overall... To most wine drinkers, to the vast majority of wine drinkers, it's a subjective experience. Do you like it? Yes or no? So it doesn't matter. You're not going to go, well, you know, there's this, this, this variable that's happening in my life right now. So I need to account for that. No, if you don't like a wine, you just don't like it. And right now, I this wine's good. I'm going to drink it, obviously, because I don't want to go to waste. But would I recommend going out to get the wolf trap? No, because it's very hot. Like alcohol wise, it's very hot. Um, like I'm thinking of having uh, some ginger beef tonight and uh, I'm kind of worried because if I drink this wine with it, I'm gonna get more of that heat, especially the alcohol and the, the spice, the chili, like that sort of interaction. Whew. I do not do well with the spice and that's just going to further inflame that, uh, that feeling. Um, you know, it tastes one, it, it tastes nice. It's very fruity still. Um, I definitely think, well, 
See, I would say aging it, but the other thing is if you age it, you could. I would recommend aging it, but the alcohol might get even more out of balance. And already it's starting to get a little bit wonky. It's starting to drift all over the road, not really sure what it's doing. So overall, I just wouldn't get this wine. Um, it's good. It's good. But, you know what? I'm not even going to call it good. It's acceptable. This wine is acceptable just because it, it's, I was so excited to drink it. The smell was exciting. And then I just drank it and I was like, oh, that's, that's the taste. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that, that was disappointing. So, hopefully next time it's a little bit better. <laughs> and on that note... I'll see you next week for another episode of Wine Men. Oh, and make sure you like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, you know, make YouTube happy so that more people see my videos because I'm looking for a bigger audience. Um, because as of recording this, I have one subscriber. Hopefully by the time this is uh, released at the end of November, and this is October right now, hopefully by the time this is released, there'll be more than one subscriber. And if there isn't, weep for me. I should do Argentina next. Just... I was thinking of you know, Evita. Is that Cry for Me Argentine? Anyways, I don't know my references. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so I'll be back next week. Uh, and I've got some exciting news coming up. But I'm not going to spoil it yet. See you next week on Wine Wednesday. And until then, I don't know. Have fun drinking. <laughs>